You have to show them through the way you behave. God's people are the ones who are showing the world what Jesus is like. And if we don't do it, Cameron, where else is it going to come from? If God's people are not going to show the world around us Jesus, who's going to do it? Before you were the duck commander, yep. before you were an entrepreneur, a businessman, a guy on TV, what were you like as a young man? As a heathen? What, were you a heathen? Well, oh yeah, I went to church, but unfortunately, the term going to church is not in the Bible. You think about it, without God, Cameron, there is no hope. And as a young man, you didn't have that hope. You, you, didn't you, went, have to, you went to church, but you didn't, didn't have, have that hope. Nope. I got in college. You're like, did you ever hear anyone speak kindly of the Father, Son, or Holy Spirit your entire college career? Not one kind word. Not one. Mm. I came out at best at agnostic. If anyone had seen me up till I was 28, they would have said, that guy is of the devil himself. That guy is up to no good. I never had heard the gospel. So when I heard it, let me get this right. All of my sins are going to be removed, and it's all on God. He's the one that did it. I'm not good enough to earn it. I've already proven that. Free of charge, resurrected body from the ground, constant mediating work while we're here. When we make mistakes, not counted against you. The blood continually cleansing us. Be sought in light of the world. Most people are not coming to church buildings and say, what's going on here? Not this culture. Yeah. We're gonna have to be, when they see us, Cameron, the way we roll, we're gonna to have to impact them for good or they're not gonna change. We're not conformed to the pattern of the world. We, we, we renounce that, see what I'm saying? I hear just what you're saying. Uh, Phil, you um, it's amazing what different worlds we come from. I come from Hollywood, California, and you're in the Louisiana woods. But we have things in common. We love this country, we appreciate, and we value the, the, the principles upon which it was is founded. Hollywood meets redneck. We, we have a meal. <laughs> We have a great time. But you know, now we have something else in common. You've raised four boys, I'm raising three boys. And uh, my, my, your boys are growing, mine are, are getting there. What, what would you say is wrong with parenting today, in your opinion? All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking. Take the scriptures and teach them. Take the scriptures and rebuke them. Nope. You're going in the wrong direction. They're about 10, there are five. You say, nope, come back here. That gets out of whack. You end up with what you now have. If you keep that in front of them all the time, they won't depart from you. All mine, faithful, godly men, they got their wives and all their little kids, you know. Now they're training their children how I train them. So, and you need to keep it. And that way it becomes generational and you don't lose it. In, in one generation. I was a product of the 60s. Unfortunately for me, you joined the crowd. Oh, I joined them. At 28, put on my brakes and said, wait a minute. I'm running Miss K off, I run the kids off, getting drunk. I said, smoking dope, running, whoring around. I'm like, I never had heard the gospel. So therefore, I did not think it worthwhile until I was 28. Phil, if you could go back and speak to the 20-year-old version of yourself. What advice would you give Phil Robertson? Now, all the ones we work with in the rehabs, the prisons, when I'm seeing these 20-year-olds, it is a tough call for me to say, I've been down the road you're currently on. I've been on that road. It's a road that leads to nowhere. My own nephew tried to steer him in the right direction. I told him, look, two roads, one's wide and one's narrow. The narrow road is way, way better. You'll have hope. I said, these drugs are not gonna do it, man. They're not gonna do it. He yeah. literally hanged himself in his jail cell. Wow. So we attended that funeral. So I've seen it happen within my own kinfolks. Well, all those 20 O's you're talking about, it's a tough sale to get them to turn. Very tough. 
we continue to try, and for everyone that makes it out of there, we're like, whoo, that one there made it. Yep. But most of them, they're slaves to the flesh, and you can't get them off of it. I, I think it's, it's a challenge to grow up anywhere, whether you're out here in, in Louisiana, and you could have the appearance of religion out here because you got a church on every corner, or you could be in a place like Hollywood, California, the place that, that generates a lot of trash that goes out into the world through movies and music and, and other kinds of things, politics, whatever. But I think there's an opportunity for everyone to turn their heart to love God and to love their neighbor. And, yeah. and uh, I appreciate you devoting so much of your time helping people to do that and talking about it boldly. You have to show them through the way you behave. God's people are the ones who are showing the world what Jesus is like. And if we don't do it, Cameron, where else is it going to come from? If God's people are not going to show the world around us Jesus, who's going to do it? I mean, you say the heathen's not going to do it. No, they don't have the Spirit of God in them. You say, hmm. And it's hard to show them that two hours on Sunday morning inside a church building. They're not inside You're not the where they are. If you went every time the doors were open, I gave you about four hours out of 168 in a week. You're like, what are you doing the other 164 hours? Where you work is where you can point them to Jesus, where you work, where you play. That's when you show them. We now have God confined to structures with tall steeples in front of them. They're all in rows. <laughs> and you really don't even really know that person right down there. Hey, how you doing? Pretty good. One time a week. Yeah. It's yeah, not enough, Cameron. It's not gonna cut it. Not enough. You got to have family structures meeting together in their homes where they eat, where they play, like this. Yeah. You coming from, we're, 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 we're interacting here. Yeah. You say, we have to do more of that. You say, so you and Miss Kay in the dark or night are not arguing and bickering and calling each other names. No, sir, my woman, my wife best friends. I'm not going to be mean to that woman. You say, well, when does the sex play out? Because you're a younger man. Now, I'm 72. You're going to have to find someone older than I am because it's still going. <laughs> so I'm giving you some encouraging words. It's still happening even in your 70s. Phil, this has been great. This is awesome. Thank you for spending the whole morning with me, showing me how to catch catfish, how to clean and how to cook them. This is, this is the best fish it's I've ever just had. just a little, a little a, a millimeter, just a little redneck might wear off on you and you go back to, you take that back to California. I might start growing a beard. Think about it. Hi, I'm Kirk Cameron, and thanks for watching the TBN YouTube channel. We hope this video blessed you. Please make sure you hit the subscribe button and then tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. And please share the video with a friend who needs to hear it. Thanks, and God bless you.